Bobby Fischer famously said that his favorite moment in chess is when he breaks a man's ego. And there's nothing quite as ego-breaking as laughing at your opponent's first move, which is what Bobby Fischer did in this game. Uh, this game is a game that was played in the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal. Bobby Fischer had the white pieces and William Addison had the black pieces. And William Addison was a strong player in his own right, but uh, was really no match for Fischer in this game. This was around three of the tournament. Fischer opened up with e4 and uh, Addison played d5, the Scandinavian defense. And it said that when Fischer saw this move, he kind of smirked and chuckled to himself. If you're black in that situation, I mean, what's more ego crushing than Bobby Fischer really on his tear to become world champion laughing at your uh, your first move? So Fischer continued with E takes D5. And after Queen takes D5, we've got Knight C3. Uh, this is just your basic Scandinavian. Uh, it's kind of nice for white that white can develop the knight with some tempo on the queen. After queen retreats to D8, white grabbing the center with D4. There's a couple different options for the queen if you play the Sicilian or the Scandinavian, excuse me. The queen come out to A5, the queen can come uh, back here, and the queen can even uh, come back to D6. Obviously, um, William Addison going for a queen D8. After D4, knight of six from black, and then uh, bishop C4 from Fisher. Here, Addison played bishop F5. A better move for Addison would have been something uh, like bishop coming out actually to G4. What this does is it puts some pressure on the queen, and if white doesn't want to uh, weaken their kingside by pushing their F3 pawn right away, they could do something like blocking with the knight. The problem, though, is that now this pawn becomes weak because the knight's pinned. So black would have a move like uh, knight c6 with both the queen and the knight eyeing this d4 pawn. Meanwhile, the, the knight's pinned to the queen. So that would have been a little bit better move for Addison, but he didn't go for that. He played bishop f5. And what that allows Fisher to do is play a move like queen f3. And this is a great move because it forks the bishop and this uh, b7 square. you got to realize in the openings, anytime you take your bishop out too early, this uh, b7 square, this, these g7 squares, these kind of squares right here can become very weak. And that's exactly what is happening to black here. So as black, how do you defend this bishop and this pawn at the same time? You play uh, queen c8, which is exactly what Addison played. And here, Fisher just continued with his development, bishop g5. Uh, the whole idea here uh, with bishop g5 is that white is giving up a pawn. So the c2 pawn is hanging. Fisher doesn't mind that. And we're going to see a couple different examples of this game of where Fisher values activity more so than material, which is something that's really important in chess. And uh, you don't want to throw away material willy-nilly, but it's definitely important to understand the value of having well-developed pieces, well-placed pieces, especially in the opening. So here, Addison picks that pawn up, bishop takes c2, but that's okay. Fisher gets to develop his rook with tempo. After rook c1, the bishop comes back to g6. And now black has moved this bishop a couple times. They've moved the queen a couple times, and white has been able to really develop so many of their pieces to great squares. After knight g e2 from, from white, we get knight d uh, knight bd7, excuse me, castle kingside, and e6 from, um, from black here. And so uh, here, Fisher played bishop takes f6. Uh, another idea he could have done here is he could have played a move like knight f4, uh, really piling up on this e6 square. And then black could have played bishop b7. And then here, a great little thing that white could have done is after capturing even though you're giving up the bishop and only giving two pawns back, it's such a strong theme in chess to have your knight on the sixth rank. This is the opponent's sixth rank right here. And th these, this is really where a knight is best place. And the idea is that the knight can uh, fork kind of right into your opponent's position. And this really becomes a monster knight. You can throw a rook behind it. So uh, that, that would not have been a bad strategy for Fisher. He didn't go for that, though. Uh, instead, he, he just exchanged bishop. So bishop takes f6. Here, Addison making a bit of a mistake. You'd think that he'd take back with the knight. That would make a little bit more sense to me. But instead, he took with the g-pawn. Unclear kind of what Addison was thinking, why he wanted to keep this knight here. And a great uh, theme Fisher employs anytime your opponent's king is stuck in the center, and especially when you're in a position where you are more developed than your opponent. Uh, white clearly more developed, both rooks kind of towards the middle, already having castled, all their minor pieces developed. Black, meanwhile, you know, queen not in a good spot. Neither rooks are in the game. Uh, this bishop's underdeveloped. The theme is to just break the center open as soon as possible when you're in this kind of position as white. So Fisher does that by playing d5. And after e5 gets pushed, the reason why this e5 move uh, is so crucial is because it opens up this really nice weak square on, um, on f5, a great square for white's knight to jump to later in the game. After bishop b5, we just get some pinning of uh, this knight. And what that does is it makes this f6 square really, really weak. So the queen could come pick this off because the knight's pinned to the king. So we get bishop e7 showing up that weak f6 square. And after knight g3, we see that the white knight is preparing to jump to this f5 square. a6 and then bishop d3. And this is another theme in, in openings in the middle games. 
Whenever your opponent has this weakness here on uh, f5, again, a great square for the knight to come to, it's always good to trade off any minor pieces that could get your knight off that square. So for instance, this light square bishop, it would be great for uh, white if this exchange happened because now this would be a permanent outpost for uh, white's knight. So obviously black does not want to take this bishop and instead plays queen d8, adding uh, the queen to the defense of this f6 square. We get h4 from Fisher, and after h5, just preventing any kind of advance, the idea with, with, with h4 was that the pawn was, uh, excuse me, the pawn was going to come up to h5, and then the black bishop would have been forced to capture the white bishop, and then this knight would get this nice permanent outpost. After h5 for black, we get bishop f5. Fisher says, okay, fine, I'm not going to put my knight there, so you can just take, take my knight. Instead, I'll put my bishop there uh, and kind of cut deep into your position. We get knight b6 from... Uh, Addison. And here Fisher again going with activity over material. And so he plays the move knight c e4. What he's basically doing here is he's letting black capture this pawn. So after knight c e4, the pawn falls, but Fisher can basically add his f1 rook into the game with tempo here. If black doesn't do something to shore up this knight, white's going to have something really nasty. Uh, for instance, if black plays a throw, like a total throwaway move like this, white's going to have this really awesome knight f6 check. And even if you take back here, uh, this knight's falling because the queen's protecting here. So just a huge problem for, for black if, if this knight doesn't get short up. So basically Fisher finding a way to add another piece to the attack with tempo by giving up this pawn. So after um, rook d1, we get c6 gets played, shoring up this knight. And now knight c3. The knight comes back and what we're doing is we're just adding attackers on this uh, d5 knight, which is pinned to the black queen. Black relieves the pin by playing queen d6, b6. And here, Fisher found the best move in the position. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the move that Fisher played. So if you found the move, congratulations. And in order to find this move, you have to understand that it's really advantageous for white to have uh, keep this knight on the board to kind of jump into the attack here against the black king. The uh, move that Fisher played and the best move in this position is rook takes d5. It's an exchange sacrifice that allows the white knight to become very, very well placed. And again, with tempo on the queen here. So uh, what do you do as black with the queen? It's clear that there's some attacking about to go down here. This, this white knight is just poised for the attack. This bishop is poised for the attack. The queen is poised for the attack. The rook is poised for the attack. And obviously this knight is very well placed. So white just bearing down on black. Here, Addison played queen takes b2. But uh, let, let's just uh, imagine kind of what would happen if black played queen d8. In this position, there's a couple different things white could do. White could play rook c7. You got the rook right in the seventh rank, and now this bishop's about to fall. Conversely, after queen d8, you could have gotten bishop takes g6 from, from white, and then after f takes g6, uh, knight c7 check. And where where is the king going to go? If the king comes here, you'd fork the king and queen, and obviously that's no good for black. So the position just completely falling apart for black. If we go back, though, in this position right here, after the knight took on d5, Addison simply took on uh, b2. He didn't even keep the queen around to defend. And here, Fisher played rook b1, again with tempo on the queen. Uh, the rook is being protected by the bishop, uh, something to keep in mind. And after queen takes a2, now the black, with the black queen completely out of the action, Fisher played rook takes b7. And it was in this position on move 24 that Addison resigned the game, as the threats are just too numerous, uh, really, to count. I'll just show you kind of one way this could have played out. Again, black resigned in this position, but could have played out. Bishop takes f5, maybe. And after knight takes f5, again, just so many pieces keying in on this uh, weak square right here. Uh, the best move for black in this position is actually uh, rook d8. But for instance, like after knight takes uh, e7, you get something like king f8. Maybe the king tries to go for a run. But after king g6, f takes g6, queen takes f6. And the position is just flying apart. King's coming to g8. Queen's coming here for, for a checkmate. So a really just a brilliant game by Fisher. Uh, you saw a couple different times, for instance, in uh, if we run a, back a little bit, in this position right here, playing this knight move, knowing that he's giving up a pawn, but the whole point being to get this rook into the game with tempo. If we go back even further, um, giving up this c2 pawn in this position right here to bring the rook into the game with tempo. Lots of examples where Fisher is going for activity above all else, something that is so, so important. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Pretty amazing that Fisher had the guts to laugh at his opponent's first move, but probably even more amazing that he followed it up by absolutely annihilating his opponent. This was in 1970. Fisher went on to win this tournament, qualify for the uh, the World Championship, and obviously he won the World Championship in 1972. So 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. I'll see you guys next week.